So today I'm going to show you how you can take these switches apart, mostly just this one and this one. These don't need to be taken apart. So you can put LEDs in them. Now, like I said, you don't need to take this one apart because the bulb holders actually come out of the housing, but there's a little bit of work involved in getting LEDs to actually work in there without having like total bright spots and everything. This one on the other hand will need to be taken apart and this one needs to be taken apart because there's no holders for them. So I'm going to show you how to get these apart, the cargo lamp and the mirror switch. So with the cargo lamp switch you're going to need to get a small screwdriver kind of like this one and you got to lift this tab, you got to lift this tab, you got to lift the edge of this one while at the same time lifting the edge of this one and this one and this one. So it's not the easiest thing in the world but with a little bit of finagling you can usually get it. I have a second screwdriver that I use. Stick it in one side, stick it in the other side and we'll get this thing. And don't worry too much about bending it too much out of form or breaking it because Unlike some plastic in these trucks, this is pretty resilient, it seems like. And eventually, you'll be able to just pull the whole back end out. Now make sure you don't lose this little loose piece in here that slides with the switch. Because I almost did the first time I took this thing apart. Not held in by anything. So, now you can see the bulb that you need to replace with an LED. First step, obviously, is going to be to desolder this bulb from the housing. So since I don't have a handy bench vise to work with, I'm just sticking this sucker in a nice little C-clamp so I can get a handle on everything. And we're going to remove the little blue piece first, which thankfully just kind of slides off. And then we can get a good run at the solder joint. Okay, this might actually be easier if I just go for the wire instead of the bulb itself. Of course! So let's try that. There we go. One side loose. Actually, I'm pretty sure I just broke the wire, but... Not a big deal, honestly. There, now we can get a hold of the bulb itself. While we work with its wire. Ah, they twisted it around the post before they soldered it on. Okay. That's why it was a pain. And that's why the other side just broke off. So there we go. So now we have a bulbless cargo lamp switch. What do we do now? Well, first of all, we gotta make sure we get the right polarity for the LED to go back in it. And uh, we test our LEDs with this little, I set up a console here at 13.8 volts. And I've got a couple of LEDs here, ignore the green one, it doesn't matter. I'm probably gonna put this little three millimeter in to replace what essentially is about the same size. So, get yourself a little 470 ohm resistor and you can test from there as we can see this blue LED is quite good now it's putting 13.79, 13.8 into the unit but this 470 ohm resistor right here is dropping that down to about 3 volts Maybe a little bit over. 3.11 is about good enough for these. It's not too much and it's not going to make it dim so you can't see it. So anyway, now that is going to go in our switch. But because I don't feel like tampering with the factory wiring in the truck itself, I'm going to try to wire in a resistor between here and the bulb. It's going to prove a little difficult, but it should be doable. Now first, before we do that, 
we need to figure out which pin here goes to which side. So I happen to know in advance that pin B is the ground and pin A is the hot side. So that makes this the hot side, which is perfect because then I can put the resistor from the hot side to the LED and then it can just go straight to ground. So let's get started. You look at LEDs, if you ever look at LEDs real close, you will notice that one side is flat and the other side is round. Generally speaking, the flat side is ground. So we can stick this guy in here as that. And it'll sit just like that. And I can actually cut the lead off right about here. That'll give me a little bit to twist around the post. Chopper right about there. That should give me enough to wrap around the lead. Now, on the resistor side, <clears throat> it's not going to quite be as simple, but I noticed inside this housing, they left me with quite a bit of space to work with. If you'll notice, the switch comes up to be almost flush with this right here. And that bulb sticks up quite a bit. So, with the little bit of extra space I have between the flush point and the hole where the bulb goes, I can stick that resistor in here pretty easily. But I do have to watch out that I don't get in the way of the switch. So it's got to be pretty close to the housing. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Got the LED in there. Got the lead on the ground terminal. Got the resistor wrapped around the hot terminal. And the LED. Okay, so you'll be able to see here that my cargo lamp and my passenger airbag switches actually do have working backlights. But the airbag switch, I'm also going to do LEDs in because it doesn't tell me when the airbag's off or on. It just has the backlight. So, I don't know if that's a problem with the lights or a problem with the switch inside, but I'm going to break into it and see what's up. Now we can slip this one on here and see if it works. Okay. Based on the flashiness I'm seeing right now, it is in fact working. But I'm going to need to solder it up, obviously, because right now it's just twisted together. Which is good for right now, because that actually means it is working. And I'm not just rushing into it and then end up finding out, eh, it doesn't work. So, now we can go solder this thing together. Now for the rest of this, it's as simple as just putting this piece back inside of this piece and then testing it out. So the bulb goes in, the thing closes, and the switch still operates and shouldn't affect the LED at all. So we'll plug her in and check her real quick. We've got a blue light in the cargo light. And let's make sure our cargo light still works. It is ugh, totally useless actually, so the fact that it works is like totally pointless. But it does. Whee! So cool. Now I've got one more blue light up in here. Now I've got my cargo lamp switch done. Now I'm gonna go to this one, which is still in the house right now. This one is going to be difficult, so I'm not gonna worry about it right now. And my airbag switch. I'm going to see if I can actually manage to do that one. Not gonna be easy by any means because it's not put together the same as all these other switches.